Hello, hello, welcome back to another video on the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. Yes, this video shout out goes to Floyd England. Thank you for your continued support. And we're going to dive into how many get tricked. Now, we all went through this season of life a, a while back. We all go through a little period in life as we are becoming aware of the wickedness and we're becoming aware of all of the abuse and things like that and the abuse is what causes the suffering everyone i just want you to understand that it's the abuse because god is not the one doing that mm -mm. Ooh. remember when we're in repentance we learn we don't mm -mm. though a lot of people it's understandable because we all were there but they want to, they get tricked by the enemy into trying to blame God for theirs or someone else's suffering. One thing as survivors and warriors, okay, is that we realize that the abuse from the abuser, it was the abuser man causing the suffering. And then we also realize part of recognizing the moot in our own eye and we become more mindful of what we're eating, what we're putting in our body, and things like that. And, you know, walking, getting out there in nature. Yes, you know, for all of you who didn't know, you know, get out. When it's nice out, that's that's where I'm at. <laughs> if I can get two laps in, I'm getting two laps in. Sometimes I, I try for three a lot of times. <laughs> but it's a good, nice, long walk. I have speed walk, by the way. Not just casual, whatever. I speed walk. Okay, so... Get outside and enjoy, get some sunshine, you know, be mindful and to know and listening to the body and things like that. Because we realize that if we're not mindful about that, that we can cause our own upset, okay? That's why we learn we don't, don't engage in gluttony, all right? Because that will have some consequences, okay? We don't engage, that's eating too much. We learn not to do that, okay? And we also, we, you know, just different things, whatever works for you whatever works for us that is it's going to be unique and individual for everyone but let's cover the scripture that goes with this topic because god is not the one that's causing the suffering remember god wants people to heal so god is not the destroyer the enemy is the destroyer so you know god is a god of love peace joy unity calm happiness beauty okay god is a god of righteousness yes god is a god of war but not in the way the world wants you to think god is a god of spiritual war so that's why as soldiers for god spiritual warriors for christ we're pushing back against narcissism and the abuse associated with it i'm gonna let that sink in but one john four seven through nine beloved let us love one another for love is of god and everyone that loveth is born of god and knoweth god he that loveth not knoweth not god for god is love in this was manifested the love of god toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. See, the narcissistic abuser, they are the ones that loveth not because they knoweth not God. That's why we say, when we turn it over to God and let him do what he's got to do, because that's the only cure. Jesus is the only cure for narcissism. And to help everyone put away childish things. All of us. While God chosen never engaged in all the stuff that the, for the especially the full-blown narcissistic abusers engaged in. Okay, we never did. We always knew, wait a minute, that, nah. I'll give you all an example. Okay, yes. The ex-psychopath roommate, I'll never forget this, it was after a storm and some branches had fallen down from, it was a golf course, so on, on this, uh, and then uh, the, the yard at that place, 
there was a the fence and then the golf course on the other side. Well, the tree was on the other, yeah, you know, on the golf course property. And it had, you know, the storm had knocked some branches from it into our yard, so to speak. I don't really call it that, but the yard of that house that I happened to be in at that time. And I never will forget when the ex-psychopath roommate, instead of, I was like, well, I'm going to pick those up and put them out front at the road for the, because at the time they have cleanup crews coming around to pick that stuff up. But no, what did he do? No conscience whatsoever. None whatsoever. Meaning no love of any kind or whatever. And he just, I uh, never, he goes, nah, never mind. We'll just throw them over there. Throw them back on the, he threw them back on the golf course and said, they'll take care of it. And I was like, uh, that's not very neighborly. I mean, really? I was like, wow. So, so all those little wicked, oh gosh, that was just, out, uh, and the look on his face, he was snobby about it. Oh yeah, he was snobby about it. So, and I was like, okay, that's definitely not godlike at all. So you got to remember that too, everyone, that narcissistic abusers, they don't engage in anything that godlike. They, you know, they, they walk around, just like God tells us, they walk around, you know, having a, a, um, you know, a form of godliness, like, you know, the snobbiness, whatever, which God is not snobby, y'all, but it, it just kind of takes on a form of, a, you know, of, of a godliness, you know, because they think that they're a god in their mind, but they continue to deny the spirit of God within and in doing so, they're committing the one unforgivable sin. And that's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So I was like, okay. Okay, we see, we, we see what they're doing. And a lot of times, that, you know, when they do that, when a person does that, it's an unfortunate thing. We just continue to pray for them. Absolutely. But they're going to continue to go around and do that. But we learn that we don't blame God for anything we know. Because, remember, I, I remember saying this in another video. About how the enemy likes to paint God or use God as a scapegoat. Well, it makes sense then why we chosen are considered scapegoats. I mean, it makes sense. Not that we're God. It's just because, think about, alright, here we go. Let's put this in perspective. Think about how the narcissistic abusers, okay, they have the demon spirits attached to their mind. And so the demon spirits are controlling their behaviors. Well, when God awakens us, we're reborn in Christ, the Holy Spirit comes alive in us, then that means we're, we're doing the inner work. We're letting God make the transformation by the renewal of our mind. Letting God... Do what he's got to do to spread the the mystery of the gospel and to say, okay, you know what? To be more Christ-like, to have that peace, the joy, love. We've always had the love. We didn't know where it was coming from. Now we do. And it's coming from God, the God Spirit within. And so we're to, and, and the light. You know, we are the light. Narcissistic abusers are the darkness. So we are exposing the darkness. But we're doing it with grace. And with boldness. That's right. With conviction. Because remember the righteous are bold as a lion. So. As we continue to do that. And God continues to shape and mold us. For he is the potter. And transforming us becoming more Christ-like, recognizing the moot in our own eyes, whatever they may be, and then asking forgiveness for especially ignorant and unknown sin, and then praying for God to reveal to us what they are so we don't continue. Because again, God knows that we're not going to know until we become aware of it. Just like when we become aware of all of the behavior, the wicked behavior he tells us about in scripture. 
And we realize, though, when we go, when we read through there, for example, in Romans one, that okay, so the adultery, the uh, fornication, things like that, we can pretty much go, okay, yep, we got tricked into that one, but not that one. We got tricked into that one. So we're becoming aware of the known sin. Okay, so we got tricked into engaging in some of them, but not all of them. Because, again, we didn't know. So don't let the enemy trick you into beating yourself up. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, 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 no. God is a forgiving God. There's another one. But the one thing he will not forgive is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. He tells us that. that is it. Now, that is explicitly stated in Scripture. That... That's the only unforgivable sin. So the narcissistic abusers continue to resist the Holy Spirit, denying the power of God therein. And so he's going to turn them over to a reprobate mind. And they, they, they cannot be forgiven because they're committing blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So when it, think about it this way, you all. For when... God wakes us up and the Holy Spirit comes alive. And if one of them is still being used as a mouthpiece by the enemy himself. And is spitting out a gaslight or some kind of statement. Try to make, try to make you think uh, something that isn't true about yourself. And the Holy Spirit's alive in you. That's another way that... That abuser is resisting and committing bl blasphemy against the Holy Spirit because they're dishing out the abuse against you. Stop and think about it. But you get to a point where you see it, it doesn't trigger you anymore, you know where it's coming from, and you know that that's the enemy using them as a mouthpiece. So we have to always keep that in mind. And as a reminder, everyone, that's the other reason why when you're around people, we got to be careful when speaking. Especially divulging our plans, mm -hmm, our goals, or whatever it is God, God is working on. Remember, we move in silence. We get it done. And then we, we prepare, we plan, prepare, produce. So once we produce, it's out there. Then, if we need to. We can let them know. If God says, sure. It just depends. And as a reminder, this particular location that we're at. I know in one of the other videos, there was a tanker truck that went by. So it was like a bright light. It just flashed. I just want y'all to know that's what that was. Okay? That wasn't anything paranormal. No, 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 no. In reality now. That wasn't anything paranormal. Okay? That was just a tanker truck. A gas truck going by, a big silver one. Okay, so that's what the flash was. So you'll catch that every... When I'm at this location, you might catch that every once in a while. But that's not anything else. Now, you may catch some orbs here and there within the car. And now that is just... That's God's angel. But whenever you see that happen somewhere in the video, it's just uh, the reflection of the vehicle that happens to be going... Because the road is that way. <laughs> so I just wanted to go ahead and remind everybody. So that you won't go, don't let the enemy trip you up into thinking. <gasps> you know, no. That, that, was, that was just a normal thing that happened in, in the world. Okay. <laughs> but everybody just know. Um, we, we, don't need, we don't need to be blaming God. Because we realize something else. That, you know, we do it to ourselves. That's something else the narcissistic abusers will never, ever, ever admit to. Because they don't want to take responsibility for their own action. They don't think that they're doing anything wrong. They truly have it in their mind. They think that everybody else is out to get them. They think it's, everybody, it's always somebody else's fault. You know, they find themselves suffering from something. It's always someone else's fault. Chosen one, we know better. If we messed up, we know we messed up. We, ta we hold ourselves accountable for it. We take responsibility for that. We go, okay. And we don't make that mistake again. All right? Again, that good example of if we eat something, our body says, I don't like that, then we know we're not going to mess with that. Again, it's not for us. 
So there you go, because we are listening to God. See, when our body speaks to us, that's also another way God is letting us know. That's not really for you, my child. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So that's it, and we learn to listen to him. You know, cause after all, God's the one that created our body. So we best listen to him so that we don't find ourselves self-sabotaging. The enemy wants us to do that. Okay, so we be mindful of the things that we are putting in our body so that we don't partake in our own suffering, if you will. Because God did not want to see that happen. If God, if God wanted to see people suffering, then, um, no, that would make him the enemy. There's the trick of the enemy, to get people to blame God for the suffering. When man is the one that destroys man. Because that's what the enemy wants. The enemy, you know, enemy has got man destroying man, while at the same time tricking people into thinking that God is the one doing it. See, that is how the enemy is blame shifting and, and deflecting and pointing the finger using God as the scapegoat. No, God is not the bad guy. But the enemy keeps trying to paint God as the bad guy by trying to get in there with those negative thoughts so that people lose faith. And because if they lose faith, then they won't be able to trust God. The enemy doesn't want people trusting God. The enemy wants people fearing him. So that's really all part of it right there. But as always, you know, just know God is the God of love, peace, joy. And he is, you know, he's our father, and he will discipline us as necessary. Yes. <laughs> that's when God always steps in. It's like when the enemy is trying to get in there with some false narrative or whatever, God always, and, and he gets quicker at it too. Yes, he does. So y'all got that to look forward to. He gets quicker at it. Because as soon as you can sense, wait a minute, that's not resonating, that's not jiving, then God will jump in and remind us of something and, and let us know why that's not jiving. So there you go. As always, if you have any questions, you know where to reach me. For additional information, insight, and other good stuff, check out these videos right here. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching and for your support. Until next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father. And you keep being you. In Jesus' name, amen.